don't know about you, but that tells me that Mary's, the Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of God, must have been extremely butch. <laughs> Thinking that they were going to be able to move that boulder out of the way. Remember, if any of you know scripture, know how that boulder must have got into place. You know, it, was a, it wasn't a round boulder, it was a boulder that was round and had a flat bottom. And so when it actually fell into place, it fell into place. Uh, you know, and they know, we know this from scripture, that they placed guards in front of it so that no one would actually remove that stone. So either the Marys came equipped with an awful amount of tools to be able to get that stone out of the way that day. There's something queer about this piece of scripture. Um, or, or, or they must have just, I don't know what they were thinking that day. But knowing that the stone, when they got there, that the stone was mauled out of the way and they were able to go in, now we have an angel who is sat poised on the rock <laughs> in shimmering, dazzling white vestments. There's always something about you and me in scripture. I couldn't have written it better. Seriously. <laughs> what a wonderful way to begin a Sunday. <laughs> Knowing that you and I are included in Scripture. There's something about our lives placed right there, right at the very beginning. You know, this is a, a new series that we're beginning today about resurrection and how we live out that resurrected life. You know, last Sunday in church, we celebrated the resurrection of Jesus Christ in that season of Easter. And as we were meeting as a staff, we were talking about, well, how do we take the, the resurrection Sunday and, and kind of make that real in our contemporary world? And one of our clergy interns, Brad Rice, said, you know, I really wanted to think about how we could do resurrection from the margins. How could we embrace and, and enable one another to take the resurrection story and apply it to our own selves? How can we allow that resurrection not just to be something that happened 2,000 years ago, but continue to happen in our own experiences and our own lives? And we begun that last Sunday as we talked about the transformation of our own lives as we believe in Jesus. And remember last Sunday we had uh, cardboard stories on our cross which we were, were beginning to see that transformation from the things of our lives what that we were before we met Jesus to who we are after meeting Jesus talking about that resurrection experience and how we make that real for us in this contemporary world, in this contemporary moment. So that the scripture is not dead, but the scripture comes to life for us and continues to be that about good news. You know, as we were thinking about this sermon series, I said to, to Brad on, on Wednesday, I said, Brad, where, where do you see this particular scripture going? And, you know, Brad's a, a really cool guy and a, a really wonderful way of, of, of uh, you know, bringing new knowledge. But he said, you know, Reverend Neil, I don't really know. I just heard of, thought of the titles. I said, gee, thanks, Brad. So over the last few days, I've been kind of meditating on, oh, what could this mean about resurrection from the margins? And what could it really mean for us in this contemporary world? And I want to be honest with you, I was struggling with the scripture for, for a number of different reasons. One of those reasons is because it's such a well-known scripture. You know, it's something that we preach about every Easter in our services, about how the Marys got to the tomb and, and the stone was moved away and how the Marys went in and how they met Jesus and how they were sent them back to the disciples. I mean, it's a scripture that many of us know. And then I, I tell you, it was about four o'clock this morning. I was awoken from my sleep. Now, I, I don't know what awoke me from my sleep. It may have been that I needed another set of medication or something, but you know, I was suddenly awoken from my, from my sleep and suddenly I came to a new piece, a new revelation of this particular scripture that I wanted to share with you today. And I think it really speaks to the voice from the margins. And the thing that really spoke to me from this particular passage wasn't what I've preached necessarily in the past, but was this sudden realization that the, the men and the women, the early disciples of Jesus, had now all abandoned Jesus. If you really read scripture, you'll find that apart from the Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of God, who obviously had extreme courage to come to the tomb that day, apart from them, everybody else had scattered. Some had gone off to have returned to the things that they once knew. Some of the disciples had gone fishing. Some of the disciples were hiding in an upper room for fear that they would be next. The disciples of Jesus had all fled and, and even though Jesus had told them over and over again that he would rise from the dead, 
Even though Jesus had, 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 even on that last supper, had reminded them once again that three days later, he would come to life one more time. Even though Jesus had assured them that they would never be on their own again. No matter what Jesus had done, nobody else apart from the two Marys got to the tomb that day and even they went to anoint his body for funeral. They didn't go with the anticipation that he had risen again. They went to fulfill and just to finish the Jewish customs of their day. And it was only by their seeing that they truly believed that Jesus had risen again. All of the disciples and others had gone on their own merry way for a number of different reasons. They had returned to the margins from where they had been found. They'd returned to their comfort place. They'd returned to their place with fear and trembling of what might happen to them. And I thought about that this morning. I thought about how in ministry to the margins, even in Jesus' resurrection, he didn't anticipate or even expect them to come to the tomb that day. But Jesus, one more time, stepped back onto this earth to rediscover and to go back to the places of the margins where he would find his people. What an incredible story of Jesus who continues even after death to return, to go to the margins of society and to find his people. Now those margins for those early disciples, you see, these weren't the people who were famous of his day. They weren't the, the religious right. They weren't the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, the, the ones who believed that they had all their faith in order. These were the same disciples that Jesus had called in his own life. The ones who believed that they were nothing. The ones who believed that they just had to follow tradition. These are the ones who were excluded from religious life. And even after death, Jesus returns to those margins to welcome them home one more time, to regroup them, just like a mother hen regroups her chickens, her little, little chicks. Here is Jesus now going back out into the world to regroup those disciples who had abandoned him, who had left him alone, who had left him for dead. And he returns one more time to the margins of this world in order to find his disciples one more time. I don't know about you, sisters and brothers, but I take great comfort in that scripture this morning. That here, 2,000 years later, as we think about resurrection, as we think about ministry from the margins, it is the Jesus of this time, of this land, who is inviting us, God's people, God's disciples, to once again return to the margins of society in order to welcome the disciples home, to welcome you and I home. I don't know about you, but Jesus certainly found me on the margins of society. You know, I, I come from a place where I'm not welcome. I'm not worthy. I'm not loved. I don't have a place in this world. And yet, 25 years ago, Jesus sought me out from the very margins of my own life to be welcomed back into the household of God. And here we are, 2,000 years later, calling us, God's disciples, in resurrection, not only to know that we have come from the margins, but if we are truly a resurrected people, that we too must go back out to the margins to call God's people home.